Hi, Paul. Hey, how are you? I'm fantastic. Thank you for asking. How are you? I'm good. Where are you? I'm in LA, actually. I'm in New York. Nice to see you. Nice to see you too. So I can't say good morning because you're already in the afternoon, but <laughs> good to know. So let's just jump right in. There's so much anticipation surrounding this new series. Um, I feel like you guys are used to that, but do you feel like this is a little bit different because this is something we haven't seen before? Yeah, I think so. And also, I think the length of time is adding. I mean, somebody just told me it was 500 days since the last. So it was, I was like, wow, yeah, that's, that's some time has passed. So yes, I do feel that there's um, added expectation and that's lovely. You know, I mean, we work, we work really hard on this. It's an explosion of, of mad creativity. And I am so thrilled that we're finally uh, getting it out to uh, our audience and our fans. And um, I think they're going to be thrilled. See, you say 500 days. That's how you know there's such a huge fandom created around this. People That's are like marking the days off their calendars. Uh, yeah. has, has it been hard to keep this a secret since, there, you know, you have been waiting a long time to, you know, for this day since, it's, you know, next week it's coming out? Yeah, I mean, I was helped by a global pandemic that kept me in my <laughs> house for, uh, you know, under lock and key for uh, eight months or whatever it was. Uh, but um, yeah, it really has because I, I, I think it's, um, I think it's really going to, Marvel fans, I think it's going to bring a lot of new fans. And I think it's also uh, going to be really satisfying for uh, stalwart fans that have been watching and the the it's it's gonna deepen and and and, and make and make them see the Marvel Cinematic Universe in a whole new light moving forward. I agree with you. I think it's going to bring a lot of new fans too, and I'm I'm interested to hear your take on that because this is something with like the creative vision mixed with the humor. It's just adding something very new and fresh to the series. But why do you think it's going to bring in some new fans? Well, I think it's got a real uh, nostalgic quality for those uh, those shows of yesteryear. You know, I grew up watching those shows in England in London. And I, you know, I fell in love with America through those shows, and I, um, yeah, I, I ended up living here. So, uh, I, so I've got a real, I've got a real um, soft spot for those shows. But I think that the the you know, the, so two super powered individuals get dropped into the you know middle of this sort of idyllic black and white. Uh, American uh, suburban TV show. <laughs> and then they start hurtling through the American century at breakneck speed. And Vision begins to think, well, something's not right in this town. Something, something really wrong about this town. And, and then the, 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 the MCU, as we are familiar with, and this world collide in what I think is an incredibly satisfying denouement. I agree with you about that. I grew up on these shows too. I grew up in a strict household where it was the only thing I was allowed to watch. It was like, I love Lucy, Dick Van Dyke. I'm trying to talk to kids at school and they're like, what are you talking about? Yeah, so I- <laughs> I all sports came Dick Van Dyke show. <laughs> all these shows um you're speaking of the character vision that you play what do you love the most about playing vision again okay so i was slightly worried about how different it would seem and then i realized actually he's always been changing you know i mean he's but you watched him get born for god's sake which is i hope the last time i have to be born on screen and uh and he's sort of omnipotent but he's also really naive and that's kind of delicious to play with. That was delicious to play with. And then he's becoming more and more human and, and sort of ironically, because he's an android, the most human uh, that something can be. And, and, you know, he's kind of Ultron, he's kind of Jarvis, he's kind of Tony Stark. And then he's also just himself. And I realized what that is is just really a decent, kind, 
being. And so you throw a little Dick Van Dyke in there or a little Brian Cranston later on in, in the Malcolm in the Mall. Uh, you know, you, 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 he's still vision. Brian Cranston. Okay, you're giving me some hints. So I was going to say, along with, you know, the way that his character changes, was it fun, though, to bring that humor to this character, but then along with some heart? Yes, 100%. And I, I, I don't get to do that very often in my career. <laughs> and, and, and so it was a, it was a real, um, yeah, it was a real bore. And the heart stuff, I think that's true. I think that there's, yeah. you know, so often these mo the, 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 these movies are, are sort of dominated by uh, testosterone, and this one's definitely dominated by estrogen and uh, and, <laughs> and the 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 payoff at the end because of that. The battle royale is just so. Give me more. Give me more. As much as I can give you. <laughs> so you do. You you mentioned Brian. Cranston and you we see you travel through different eras different decades but then pay homage to different sitcoms along the way which is your favorite decade that you play in and the the favorite sitcom that you pay homage to uh well I really loved the I really loved the Dick Van Dyke show but then there is the second episode which is much more bewitched is I, I really, there's a magic show in that yeah. uh, show, uh, in that episode. And I really loved, uh, I really loved playing that. But there's also stuff much later on, right at the end of the series that was equally fabulous to do, but I can't talk about that stuff because there is a huge reveal and huge surprise um, uh, that, um, uh, that I can't give away. All I can say is that I work with an actor that I really admire and oh. respect and think is just a genius. It's a hell of a tease. See, that's how you do it. That's how you do it, Paul. One thing that you know people are talking about so much are there, that there are these hidden messages throughout the episodes that give you some insight maybe as to what's happening, what's going to happen, and then maybe to other Marvel movies. Is there truth to that? Oh yeah, there is. Okay, okay. There and then many, many, many Easter eggs along the way. Just just give us one. Uh, look out for it. Uh, simply can't. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't. Okay. You know, I had to try. I had to try. All right. Last thing. I don't know. I'm gonna get I don't want to get fired. <laughs> No, no, they wouldn't do you like that. You're too important. They wouldn't do that to you. Maybe just like a slap on the hand. Yeah, maybe. Does this mean though that we're gonna see a return from you or to the Marvel universe beyond WandaVision? Um, that, is a, that is a question uh, for people with bigger paychecks than me. <laughs> uh, but you can absolutely feel free to ring Kevin up and talk to him about it. I would love that. <laughs> I'll do what I can. I'll do what I can. <laughs> Paul, thank you so much. Congratulations on the new series. So excited about it and what's to come with it. Really nice talking to you. Thank you for watching. If you want more extra, hit the subscribe button and the bell so you'll never miss a video.